And we'll take a look at Tezzeret's deck. Um... Something happened here. Um, let's go ahead and reset this. And we'll go through here and pick out cards one by one. Alright. So, Terramorphic Expanses have to stay in the deck. You play three colors, they have to stay in. Signal Pest, terrible. Terrible. They don't have an ability. They're a 2 1 for 2 mana that doesn't have an ability. Uh, these guys are, we've already discussed, if you want to know more about this, go look at the video with Sarkin's deck. <laughs> um, go for the throats are great. These guys are not. They are a two mana that says they gain flying. You have to pay mana for them to gain flying. That's not good for you. You don't want to waste mana that early. Um, let's see what else don't we want in this deck. Um, obviously Shape Anew is bad. We play way too many artifacts for it to be relevant. Get rid of those guys, those guys. That and that. And then we need one more card. And I think it was one of these guys that I took out. But, uh, let me, let's go through this. These guys are amazing. They make artifacts cost one less. Why wouldn't you want to play them in an artifact deck? Uh, go for the throat. Destroy non-artifact creature. Obviously, it's bad in a mirror matchup, but... I haven't really seen that many mirror matchups. I haven't seen that many people play Tezzeret's deck, so they're obviously good. Um, Tiger Creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn for each artifact you control. That is awesome in an artifact deck. These guys, most valuable card in the deck. Never play him if he's going to die. If they can kill him, don't play him. <laughs> uh, Tide Hollow Strix, Flying Death Touch, awesome. It's a basically a two-cost kill card. And if they have to kill him with a burn spell or something, it's still trading one for one. You put that on him, and you've probably won the game. Um, make this guy indestructible? Yeah. Yeah. Minus effects will still kill him. Just so you guys are aware, if someone urges to feed him while he's got the Dark Steel plate on, it will kill him damage or destroy target creature or something like that spells will not or if you have to sack him it will kill him so sacking and minus effects are not destroying um, dead reckoning it's another kill card essentially it deals you put that card on top of your library it deals damage equal to the card's power to target creature um, these are really good removal spells um, if you have metal craft, target player sacrifices two attacking creatures instead. Uh, and since target player sacrifices an attacking creature for three mana, that's probably good anyway. I don't need to say anything about that. Protection from all colors for metal craft? Please, that's awesome. Art other artifacts you control get plus one, plus one, and his power and toughness are equal to the number of artifacts you control. That's healless one plus. Uh, there is no plus one elf, is there? No. Imperius perfect. Essentially, that's the two of those together. For three mana. That's awesome. He's got a little baby there, too. Oh, hello, little baby. Okay. Um, you're playing three colors. You need a way to grab the mana you need. Pilgrim's Eye will let you do that. Um, as long as you control three more artifacts, he's a 2-2 two -two flyer for three mana. Eh? But he helps us gain Metalcraft. Um, it's a counter spell if you control three or more artifacts. And if not, it's a cancel. That's great. Um, this is essentially a cancel in the deck. To deal three damage to your opponent. That's a good card too. I've actually won a game with this. I mean... You can get someone down to the point. I mean, you just want to have an answer for something that you can't deal with, like a Simic the Sky Soul or, And that's this area right here that's your answer. Um, Sanctum Gargoyle. Return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. It's a great card. Um, Seer Sundial. Obviously really good in late game. 
lets you draw land or draw cards, and if you draw more lands, it lets you draw more cards. This card is amazing. Every deck I've played, I haven't seen anyone playing this card. It says tap all creatures target player controls. Those creatures don't untap during their next untap step. If you need to, this is a time walk essentially. If you need to get in for damage, or if you need to prevent damage, if your opponent has a Kozilek and an Ulamog out in the field, pay for it and say, I have two turns to kill you, or two turns to get to do something that will make me win this. This is amazing. I hope I put up the video of me going mirror works, pay two, uh, and getting two. Oh no, that's the card I wanted out of there. Where's the card I was iffy on? The reason he does not go in here. But let, let me finish this. The worm coil engine. Pay pay eight, get two worm coil engines. That was fun. But this here. Power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. Okay, we have no mana excel. We have mana fix. We don't have mana excel. He costs five mana. And we have a whole bunch of really low cost cards. How many cards are you going to have in your hand when you play him? Maybe three, maybe four, maybe four. And that's, that's a really, really that's assuming that you've done barely anything all game. You don't really have card draw in this game or in this deck. So he's maybe a 4-4 four, four for 5. That says whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Ugh. Ugh. One life for each card you draw? You don't have card draw. If you had a card that said draw 10 cards, that'd be great. <laughs> but you don't. So he just needs to stay out of the deck. He just does not belong in here. These guys, they're a little expensive, but as long as they get Metalcraft, I mean, they're big butts. They're good. Um, obviously, Worm Coil wins is amazing. Put a 3-3 colorless worm token with Death Touch and a 3-3 with Lifelink when it dies. That's awesome. It just splits him. I mean, that turns him into a three car or two cards. He's kind of like iffy. There, I mean, there's only one in the deck, so he's worth playing, and he's a flying. And he can be used to help you stay in the game or to take your opponent out of a huge advantage. Like, vampires tend to gain, like, 40-something life every game they play. That lets you take them back down to the life total that's reasonable. Um, and you don't really have a good way to play him, but he costs 11 mana. He's in there. Late, late game, you draw him. Good. He can help you out. That's my feelings on him, because I mean, you really, really, you don't want anything else in here. I mean, you could make it a little bit faster if you didn't. If you were like, I'm gonna go play aggressive artifacts. Well, you can, you can play aggressive artifacts. I mean, they have enough little low cost artifacts. It's just, I feel like the other aggressive decks are better. So I would rather go like a mid to late game artifact deck and probably win a few more. And there are way too many artifacts in the deck for Shape New to be good. I th I've said it a hundred times. It's just. You go, I'm going to polymorph my Pilgrim's Eye, and I'm going to hit Sanctum Gargoyle, or I'm going to hit this guy, or I'm going to hit... I mean, if you don't hit the Darksteel Colossus, or the Magister Sphinx, or the Worm Coil Engine, you're not going to do good. And there's no way to manipulate the top of your library to see what's going on there anyway, so... That's my opinion there. Oh, there is a way, but you can't do a Darksteel Colossus. Because when the Darksteel Colossus dies, if he does die, he gets shuffled back into your library. So, you can't do anything there. Chandra's deck. I didn't show very many videos of this, and there is a reason behind that. Obviously, this is way too expensive. Five mana for five four. Eh, still way too expensive. You don't play creatures. Not a point in the deck. This card is terrible for you. Terrible for you. You tap three mana to let your opponent draw seven cards and then pass it pass your turn and let him play first. Not a good card. Um obviously if you were the arch enemy, it'd be good, but three mana to deal three damage to an opponent. Uh-uh. Plus two plus two in haste. It's okay. 
It's okay, but you don't have that many creatures. You're more of a burn deck. Or you don't, you don't have creatures that stay out very long. Dragon's Claw, once again. Watch the video on Sarkin's deck. And I will tell you why I don't play this. Uh, I feel like these walls, although they're beastly, they just... It's a one mana, I hope I killed you. If you don't draw them first turn, they're basically just going to chump block and not do anything. And I took out one of these guys. <sighs> and let's see if I can't explain why. Obviously, these cards are amazing late game. You can use them on your opponent. You can use them on a creature. They're great. Um, he's okay, but you have a lot of one-cost cards. So I feel like one is good in the deck because you have so many things that you could do turn one that you might want to save mana for. I mean, the, well, that's a sorcery. I mean, you probably won't be using that turn one. But he just doesn't fit very well in the deck. The bigger ones are better. They've got their 2-2 two, two for two more mana. Might as well play those. Um, incinerate. Ugh. Obviously a great burn spell. I'm talking too much, not getting enough oxygen to my brain, so I keep yawning. Um, Goblin Arsonist basically can kill two twos. Or it can kill that one annoying creature that's on the field, like... Uh, what's his name? The one that says, pay one red, tap. Remove two cards in your library. Or he can kill Spike Shot Elder. You know, one of those two from Cost Stack. I mean, that's great. It helps you out a lot. Um, Kiln Fiend is amazing in the deck, especially when you play a whole bunch of spells. Um, Punishing Fire. If your opponent is playing this, a Dragon's Claw, Punishing Fire will let you win the game. You can go Punishing Fire, deal two, pay one, return it. Punishing Fire, deal two, pay one, return it. And just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Uh, Pyroclasm for crowd control. Volcanic Hammer. Uh, because it's a burn spell for Kiln Fiend. And it's a good way to remove a creature or deal 3 damage to a player. Um, Chandra's Phoenix is amazing. You can pay this to return it to your hand. Um, these guys are the upgraded version of him. So they're obviously better. This guy rapes Jace's deck. Um... Chandra's Outrage. Be careful using this card in Jace's deck. If you target a creature with that says when this card becomes targeted by a spell or ability, sacrifice it, you will not deal two damage to your opponent. So if you're looking to deal the two damage to your opponent more than you are to kill the creature, don't use Chandra's Outrage on one of those creatures. But it's a four cost that deals four damage to a creature and two damage to a player. That's good, and it's an instant. So you can wait for your opponent to equip something or pumps something or whatnot. Flame Tongue Kavu, you cannot play while he's the only creature on the field. He will kill himself. See, he's got that big fireball in his mouth. If he can't shoot that, it explodes and his head just goes... <laughs> That's the best way to analyze that guy there. This guy is in the deck because of cards like this. If you get him out and he doesn't die... On turn 5, and you go turn 6, Lava Axe for 10? Stupid. This is obviously great crowd control and a great way to deal additional damage to a player. As is this. And this is a great way for crowd control as well. And it's a single target player. As soon as you hit 7 mana, it's really good late game. I mean, I can kill a Vampire Nocturnus. It's not just creatures with out flying. It's every creature they control. I mean, look at that wave. That thing's huge. That's going to take out vampires in the air and on the ground. So this is just a good card. Good, solid deck. I like it a lot. Um, but a lot of the games, that it's it's really hard winning up to the point where you start unlocking the better cards. You have a really hard time doing anything because of you got crappy cards like this and like this and like that and that and stuff in the deck. And it's really hard to get... A lot of wins. Like, uh, there's a reason I didn't put up a lot of Garrick's decks. 